do beer review and tonight we're going macro that's right we're not going local guys we're going to Molson Coors or Coors out of Golden Colorado and we're going to drink their batch 19 pre-prohibition style lager what the hell is that right well they're telling me on the website that they went back in the old log books they dug around and they found this old recipe that was from 1919 before prohibition set in and it's how they did it back in the olden days hmm now this is an let's see it's an unpasteurized and naturally filtered beer so i've heard some people say it's a little hazy i've seen some pictures of it that looks clear i've seen some pictures that looks hazy so there's only one way to tell i've only found this ever at one store the other day and you know i'm interested to give to give it a try they used um like it's like strizzle fault and hearse buckler hops or something like that in there the combination is supposed to be they're the only ones that are doing it these a couple different types of malts it's an american adjunct lager so i'm sure there's some corn or something in here as well um i didn't research it all that much but it is 5.5 percent abv and 26 ibus i can tell you that so i'm sure this is a twist off cap but i ain't twisting it off I'm popping it off. You know it, guys. Wow, lots of smoke coming off the top of that. It is a twist off. And also, right on the front of the bottle, clearly displayed here, there's the date, and it says this is good until February um, of 2013. So, this is plenty fresh at the time of the, um, you know, filming of this video here. And, um, you know what? That's nice and clear, guys. Anybody can do that with an inkjet cover. Real easy to put it right in the, in the neck of the bottle here. But, let's get it in the uh, Tulip Top Pilsner glass here, or... or Rising glass, whatever we're going to call it today, and see what we can get. I'm sure we can get some mighty head to grow out of this. All right. Aha, yes, as predicted. Okay. Um, I'm looking here. There's not a lot of chill haze on it. It's a little tiny. It's pretty clear. It's a little, little tiny bit hazy. Maybe that's from the natural filtering. Maybe they're filtering it through the, the mash at the bottom of the tank that's a, or the refuse that's left over in the bottom of the tank or whatever. But... Uh, it's settled down a little bit. We actually have an off-weight head on this one. It's um, really rocky up at the top. It's solid two fingers. The bubbles are soapy on this. A lot of active carbonation coming up from the bottom. And I'm looking, there's not really any alcohol legs to speak of. Maybe a little tiny, tiny bit, but it's only 5.5%, so we're not talking about a you know booze monster here. Um, it's settling down, but still solid two finger head. It's not a bad looking beer, it's a darker amber color, so some of the malts must have a bit more roast on them, not just pale or crystal malt. Um, but it's not a bad looking beer, it's sort of inviting, and let's get a nose on it and see what it tastes like. I mean, you know what, I'll give it a go once. Hmm. It's not that bad, it's a lot of malt sweetness in this. I don't smell that like corn, like tortilla chip, like crappy smell. It's, it's, wow, it's not too bad. A lot of, it's mo mostly malt sweet, it's maybe a little bit of honey. Really, really, really faint hops, like not, well, like, uh, I don't know how to describe it. This is a tough to, beer to put a nose on. It's mainly malty, honey sort of sweetness with a little bit of piney hops, really, really faint in the background, but it mostly just smells sweet. But it doesn't have that nasty adjunct lager wet cardboard smell. It also doesn't have that nasty metallic or corn chip smell. So that's three pluses for this already. So let's get a swig. Hmm. Wow. Interesting. It's not as sweet as it smells. It is quite sweet. Don't get me wrong. It is quite sweet. It does have some bittering hops in there. The... Um, body is actually medium in this it's not that thin watery just you know spewed out lager um but man it's this is actually really isn't that bad look we got some decent glass lacing on here um the color is nice and i'm really surprised that it actually does have a a little tiny bit of a hot taste in the finish it's it's dominated by that malty sweetness but it doesn't taste like cheap or corn chip or anything you're used to with a lager so this recipe must be different it kind of reminds me a little bit not it doesn't have the spiciness because it doesn't have the belgian yeast and all that but blue moon and this is in their blue moon category they actually put it under their craft beers you know so man you know what guys this isn't that bad i'm i'm really shocked at this um I, i'm gonna actually i'm gonna take a little bit of time believe it or not i'm gonna drink this down a little bit more guys i've chugged it pretty good because it's super easy to drink 
And I'll be back with a grade in a minute, guys. See ya. Hey, guys, I'm back. Man, you see I've pretty much destroyed this. I emptied the bottle out, drank it all the way down. And you know what? This is not a bad beer. Look, it's got epic head retention. I filled it all the way up. I did eh, about three quarters of the bottle, I guess, when I did the first pour on this one. We got really good glass lacing. Um, it's a nice, tasty beer. And I'm pleasantly surprised and shocked at this beer. I thought this was going to be complete and total rubbish when I bought this beer. And I said, man, this is a Coors product. Well, it's going to be crap or whatever. And I had bias going in. I'm going to totally admit that. But I'm, I'm really shocked at this. For a session level strength beer, it is, it is quite good. I'm surprised. It does not taste like a cheap adjunct lager in any way, shape, or form. There's been quality ingredients put in this. You can tell there might be some adjuncts in there that, that are boosting the sweetness a little bit. But there's actually some caramel flavor in this. As it warms up, you can feel its alcohol a little bit. But you know what? For what it is, for a six-pack of this, and I think that like comes in about like $6.99, that, it's, a, it's not a bad beer at all. So, Beer Advocate is given an 81. Rate beer is given a 32. You know what? I'm going to go with the with the I think I'm going to go with a solid B on this. I'm going to go with an 83 on it. It's not a bad beer at all. I you know what? I'd actually drink it again. I don't know if I'd go seek it out, but I wouldn't have any problem drinking this again as a session weight lager. Um, if you guys can find this, I'm not sure every market that they sell it in. It's probably got big distribution since it's a Molson Coors product, but man, it's a really tasty beer for what it is, and I'm surprised as hell that I'm liking it as much as I am. Maybe, I don't know, I've been beer fasting or whatever, or I'm, and I'm fiending for a beer, but for whatever reason tonight this is tasting really good, and I think it's a decent beer, but I mean, look at this, guys. For a $6.99 beer, I've had some stuff from Anchor and, and who else? Geez, Flying Dog and other brewers out there that I haven't liked as much that are supposed to be awesome, you know, craft brewers and micro brewers and all that. And for a macro brewer to produce this, I'm I'm pretty happy. And so it's just a lager beer too. So whatever's in this 1919 recipe, man, they were making it way better before Prohibition, and that kind of makes sense too because after Prohibition and World War II that came off uh, after that, and the rationing and everything that went on during World War II, that's also another reason the beers got so cheap and and less expensively produced and everything. So there's other ex ex extenuating historical factors involved here too, too. But anyways, guys, I'm flapping my gums. You're getting tired of me here, here in my, my mouth tonight. I'm giving it a B. Give it a try, guys. Let me know what you think. Thanks a million for watching. As always, I really appreciate you guys. Um, if there's any beers you want me to review, if I can find them, I'll do my best to review them for you. Put some comments down in the comment section. If you guys had this, let me know what you think. Um, until then, what do we always say, guys? Think globally. Drink locally. Support the craft beer movement. I guess this is crap beer. Anyways, until the next time, guys, thanks for watching DJ's Brew Tube, and that's a big peace out.